Hello, beautiful friends. Welcome to the start of another themed reading blog. I know it's been a minute since I've done a vlog on my channel. I kind of fell off the vlogging wagon just because I was realizing that it was really hard to keep up with vlogs when I wasn't necessarily willing to film the minutia of my life. And if I was going to have like an equal amount of B-roll and reading updates during a normal average week, that's what I was going to have to do. And I was like, no, I can't be bothered. So I still do love the idea of themed reading vlogs. And so that is what I'm bringing to you today. I don't know when this video is going to go up, but it is basically a Valentine's Day themed reading vlog. And the fact that I'm going to be reading nothing but romance, specifically romance books that have been highly recommended by the online bookish community. So I looked in a lot of different places for these recommendations. First and foremost, I did check the romance nominations for the Goodreads Choice Awards for 2022 and had a lot of great suggestions there. I also pulled some online bookish groups that I am a part of. I asked what their favorite romance was. And because I am a patron for a fellow booktuber and they have a very active Discord community, I also requested that they give me some of their all-time favorite romance suggestions. So I selected a little bit from each of these places and I have a lineup of what I feel are are going to be some pretty solid romances. Some of them I had never heard of before and some of them were already on my radar and not only on my radar but already on like my TBR list or more specifically on the books that I want to read in 2023. And speaking of that I have already started the first book which is why I'm beginning this vlog and that is Part of Your World by Abby Jimenez. Abby Jimenez is on the list of authors that I wanted to try in 2023 particularly Part of Your World because it has been getting so much hype. So I have it physically and I wanted to go ahead and read it and I think I've maybe listened to two hours hours total of the audiobook, maybe a little less. And I already understand why this book is so beloved because I am in love with it already. It has the potential to be a five-star romance. I can't believe I'm saying that so early. You know, I think I'm jinxing myself a little bit, but I just love everything about this story so far. And Abby Jimenez's writing is so flawless and so smooth in terms of the pacing and the way that she is progressing the story. I'm loving the way that she is combining character-driven with plot-driven. So while the plot is progressing, you're also getting a lot of the two different main characters and it is just going so well. I'm loving the humor in this. I have smiled so much during these first two hours and I've laughed and it's just like warming my heart. It is like everything I'm wanting in this romance. So of course, because we're only two hours in, I haven't necessarily gotten into the bulk of the story, but the main premise is a romance between two very different people. We're following our main character, Alexis, and she is returning home from a funeral when she accidentally drives her car into a ditch and she's stranded in like the middle of nowhere in this very, very small area in Minnesota. And suddenly a guy comes by and offers to tow her out. And then later on, on in the night, they end up reconnecting at this bar that's like the only open thing in the town at that point because it's the off season, nothing is open, absolutely everything is closed and Alexis realized that she wasn't gonna be able to eat or go to the bathroom for a long time if she didn't stop there. So she and him end up reconnecting. They kind of have a very passionate one night stand which is very out of character for both of them but they have a lot of chemistry together. And when she wakes up and she realizes what she did, she kind of flips out and ups and leaves. But a week later, she decides to get back in contact with him and she is now with him and it's gonna progress from there, I assume. Like I said, still very early days in the book, but you can tell that they are from very different worlds. Daniel, like I said, is from this very, very small town in Minnesota where he's actually considered the mayor, kind of informally, but he's basically like the mayor of the town. But it also sounds like he's got some carpentry business and runs a bed and breakfast. So he's got a lot going on, but he's definitely salt of the earth, very blue collar. He's definitely giving the lumberjack vibes, which I am digging. I'm all for. He's a lumber sexual and I'm here for it. But Alexis is from more of the higher end of life. She is a, I think she's an ER doctor and she comes from a line of prestigious doctors who have been at this one hospital for a very, very long time. And she's kind of feeling stuck there. She doesn't want to remain at this hospital anymore because she just recently ended a very long seven year relationship with somebody who was older than her, like 10 years older. He was also emotionally abusive and he's like one of the chief surgeons there. And so she has to see him every single day and she planned on leaving. But now that her brother is no longer going to be working there, she has to, to kind of maintain the family legacy of always having a member of their family at this one particular hospital. So she is definitely from a very prestigious family. She doesn't necessarily seem uppity. She seems like very down to earth, but yet she's still very much used to the finer things in life. You can see that she and Daniel are very, very different, but perhaps the one thing that gets her the most is the fact that she is nine years older than Daniel is. And that's kind of getting to her a little bit, but I can already kind of tell the chemistry between them and I'm loving it. This is very Emily Henry-esque. I'm going to be honest with you and say that I don't think I ever felt so connected and in love with an Emily Henry book like I'm doing with this Abby Jimenez book. I know that's like blasphemy because I really do love Emily Henry and book lovers was 
like one of my favorite books of last year. But this one just kind of sucked me in and I'm enjoying every single second of it so far. And I'm very excited to see where it goes. So I just wanted to come on here and give an update, give a start to this vlog, tell you what I'm reading. And I will give you more of an update once I've gotten further into the book or once I've finished it entirely. Oh, and I forgot to mention one of the whole reasons why I decided to pull the online bookish community for these recommendations is because I am doing a do I agree with the online bookish community type vlog with this one. So that is another major theme of this. So that's why I went in that direction. So far with regard to the hype of this book, I'm loving it and we'll see if it continues. I hope it doesn't start out strong and end really, really poorly. So fingers crossed. Anyway, y'all, that is it for now, but I will check in with you when I have more on part of your world. Hi, y'all. So I am just about to head out of work and go to the gym for my workout, but I finished part of your world by Abby Jimenez today, and I absolutely had to come on here immediately and update you because I loved it so much. This book was flipping perfection. It was an easy five stars, one of the best romances that I've ever read, and it was so good that I just did not want to stop reading. So I intentionally, like during my work day, was listening to it. I usually don't listen to it during the work day because I'm often like interrupted or distracted by work but it was a slow time and so I just kind of zoned out with a color app and listened to it as often as I could because I wanted to finish it because I was loving it so much and I'm so glad that I did because this book was phenomenal. I don't even know if I can fully articulate why I loved it so much and why I felt it was so perfect but it just did everything right in my opinion. The writing was fantastic. It was very similar to Emily Henry so I feel like if you have enjoyed Emily Henry you will definitely love Abby Jimenez. This book was just filled with so much perfect humor. I wouldn't necessarily say it's bantery like Emily Henry's but I was smiling and laughing throughout the entirety of the story, which was wonderful. And I feel like Abby Jimenez did emotion so incredibly well. So not just the humor, but also the sadder side of things. Like there is a point in the story where Alexis feels like, to be fair to Daniel, she needs to go ahead and break it off, like clean break, because she knows that this can never work. It can never go anywhere based on the pressures that are on her and the differences between their lives and the expectations of her parents and things of that nature. And so she breaks it off. And during that time, I could just feel the sadness and the depression. It felt like I had gone through a breakup. I was teary-eyed while listening to it. I was like clutching my chest. Abby Jimenez did just such an amazing job of making the emotion come and jump out of the page. And I connected with this story so intensely. She did pacing very well in here as well. Like there was never a part of the story that I felt dragged or went really, really slow. I felt it flowed very well from one thing to the next while also giving you a lot of opportunity to get to know Alexis, to get to know Daniel, to get to know the people in their lives and their circumstances. And on the same lines, I feel like she did characterization very well because I felt like these characters were fully realized for me and on top of that she didn't do what a lot of romance writers do or just writers in general and just make me hate one of the characters because of something they do or some attitude that they have. I was kind of fully expecting that in here just because of Alexis's life and how she kind of feels like she needs to keep Daniel a secret not because she's ashamed of Daniel but she actually cares for him very much and she just knows that the people in her life wouldn't approve because they're very upper class high end and her dad is a very rough man he's a very difficult man he has a lot of high expectations for her and she doesn't want to subject Daniel to that and so that's why she's kind of always kept him at arm's length or like she's trying to keep things casual but I was fully expecting there to be some kind of shift where she's super deceitful to the people in her life and then it causes like a massive conflict or anything like that but really it's the people in her life that are causing the massive conflict if she didn't have all of that she would have been able to be with Daniel in the way that she wanted to be with him throughout the whole time so I thought the pacing was great the characterization was great and I also love that Abby Jimenez did not use a lot of standard romance tropes like thank god there was no miscommunication none which I appreciate I was also expecting that because like I said because of Alexis's circumstances it was just beautiful it was flawless in my opinion it was perfection and so I think it's safe to say that I absolutely agree with the online bookish community on this one I've heard literally nothing but great things about this book from everybody that I've seen read it and I understand why highly highly recommend this was just oh my gosh it was so amazing y'all just flip and read it but anyway I'm gonna stop gushing now because I do have to go to the gym but I did want to come on here and update you while my feelings and my thoughts were fresh and I'm not gonna start another romance right away just because I am still working on I'm finishing up my January TBR and the final book that I need just came in from the library so I'm gonna try to bust through that and then I will work on some more romances so I will check in with you when I have another update. Hello friends it is now officially February 1st and I have started the second book in this vlog it is Every Summer After by Carly Fortune. This book is definitely making its way around in the online bookish community. I have heard a lot of great things about it and it actually sounded from the synopsis pretty good so I wanted to go ahead and give it a try. I'm actually already 40% in which is astonishing to me because I literally just started this last night. I started this last night on my way home from the gym and since that point I've been able to listen to about 40% and I'm actually really really enjoying it. This is definitely a second chance romance.
romance. It follows our main character, Percy Fraser, and when she was 13 years old, her family bought this cabin by a lake, and next door lived Sam, his older brother, and their mother. And over the course of six summers, they built a strong friendship and then an intense and passionate relationship. And in the present day, Percy is 30 years old. It has been 12 years since she's been back to this lake, and it has been just as long since she's seen Sam, because I guess something terrible happened 12 years ago. At this point, I don't know what exactly happened, why they broke up, or anything of that nature. I just know that Percy was called by Sam's older brother Charlie because their mother has passed away and so now she's returning to this small lake town because she wants to pay her respects to their mother because she really loved their mother a lot and at this point of the story she has already been in contact with Sam they had kind of a day catching up and everything like that and obviously it's kind of hard for both of them to be with each other but yet at the same time you have that familiarity that you do have with somebody that you knew very very well and very intimately and in some ways they are kind of able to pick up right where they left off but there is definitely some things that are unsaid between them Sam seems to have moved on you know he's got a girlfriend he is a successful doctor and Percy herself has a pretty decent career but she doesn't really have as much success with her love life she's definitely still deeply affected by what happened between her and Sam and she has never really fully moved on from that so going back to this lake town and seeing Sam is very very difficult for her and I'm interested to see how it progresses I love these stories where there's kind of that reluctant return home and then you're seeing somebody who you have a complicated history with and now they're going to have to figure all that out face the things that they have been putting off for 12 years basically and so in between the present day timeline you were also getting snippets from the six summers that they've spent together so so far I'm currently on the third summer when they are 15 years old and I believe it goes 16 17 and 18 afterwards and I'm quite pleasantly surprised by how much I'm enjoying the past timelines and seeing Percy and Sam's relationship develop and of course I'm highly invested in the present day timeline as well but for now I have to go into work and I will definitely be updating you when I read more or when I finished but so far really really enjoying it and I'm definitely invested so I'll talk to you guys later hey y'all so I just finished every summer after by Carly Fortune and I loved it. I can't believe I'm saying this but I think I'm gonna give it a five stars. Two five stars for this vlog already and last year I think I only had three or four five stars in total. I did not expect this book to fill me with such emotion but I was just right there. I just felt the chemistry between Sam and Percy so intensely. I loved watching their relationship develop from friends into something more and then seeing what happened when they came back together in the present day. I thought that the pacing of this was so well done. I don't feel like it was drawn out or slow. I felt like it was just the right length for what she was trying to accomplish here. And there were also some harder topics in here like the death of a parent. Now I think my only complaint about the book and the reason why I was considering giving it a 4.5 is the twist. And my understanding is that this book is very very similar to Love in Other Words by Christina Lauren which is also on the TBR for this vlog. If that's the case and if the twist is similar and you've read Love in Other Words you'll probably know what kind of the twist is and why I don't like it. I'm not going to say anything more about what it is and I was very angry at our main character for that twist but I still believed so strongly in her and Sam's relationship. I still believed so strongly in their love for each other and their chemistry for each other and it was clear that they just never moved on from this relationship and that Percy had spent the past 12 years just punishing herself for what happened. And so while I was really angry with her for the decision that she made, I still was able to overlook it and forgive it because I wanted her and Sam to be together. So as of right now, my feelings are that this is a five stars and that's what I've placed it at Goodreads. Will I wake up tomorrow and feel differently? I don't know, but right now I feel like a hangover. I feel like my emotions have been run over by a Mack truck. And if a book leaves me feeling like this, I don't think it can be any less than a five stars. It really can't. I felt similar emotions in this than I did in Part of Your World, like when they were going through such conflict and strife and you can just feel that pain, you can feel the longing, you can feel the heartbreak. I think heartbreak can be universal and just like people deal with grief in different ways, people deal with heartbreak in different ways and people make bad decisions during their heartbreak, during their grief. And I think that's exactly what happened to Percy in this situation. She made a terrible decision because she was heartbroken and she was seeking solace and she just wanted to feel wanted and loved and she looked for it in the wrong place. Don't agree with it at all and I don't excuse the behavior that she did but I still wanted her and Sam to be together because I felt like it was right. So I just I loved the story so much. I thought it was wonderfully written. This was a very very strong debut and I will absolutely be putting her newest release that's coming out this year. I will absolutely be putting it on my TBR. Now I had no idea going into this story that it was apparently so similar to Love in Other Words and reading some of the reviews for every uh, summer after people are literally rating this book one star because they feel like it's a ripoff of Love in Other Words. Now I of course have not read it. I'm supposed to read it this month. So I'm going to go ahead and save writing a review on Goodreads until I've actually read Love in Other Words. I was thinking that maybe I shouldn't read Love in Other Words this month because they might be too similar. But now I'm thinking I'm just going to read them back to back and so that I can give a more comprehensive comparison about the two. So I think that's what I'm going to do. I think I'm going to go ahead and jump right into Love in Other Words. I'm a little bit hesitant about it though because like I said, 
said, I loved Every Summer After, and I don't know if this can compare, especially because I know Christina Lauren is very, very hit or miss for me. I have not rated a Christina Lauren a five stars. A lot of their books are like between two to four stars, and even then, I still don't necessarily remember their books. From what I understand, Love in Other Words is a lot darker, or not darker, but like harder hitting than their other books. It's less light and fluffy, and so that's what I'm hoping for. We're gonna see. That's what I'm gonna go ahead and jump into, but so far, I totally agree with the love for a part of your world and Every Summer After. I understand why the online bookish community loves these books so much, but Love in Other Words is next, and I will tell you what I think after I've started it. Hey y'all, sorry for the hot mess look. I am in my kitchen getting dinner ready. Just got home from the gym, and I have to pop on here quickly because I did go ahead and start Love in Other Words. It is not a very long book. I think it's eight hours and 22 minutes in total, so four hours and 11 minutes because I listen on two times speed. I'm about an hour into the audiobook already, and I am just rolling my eyes at the people who gave Every Summer After one star, but gave this book five stars. I cannot even comprehend because I'm only an hour into this book, and I can already tell you how superior just in writing, in detail, in complexity that Every Summer After is. I think I can sufficiently say at this point that there is enough differences overall that this is an easily distinguishable book from Every Summer After. Like, yes, the overall plot outline is the same. The overall character dynamics are different. There's a lot that's different in here. But the most astonishing difference of all so far is that Love in Other Words is almost completely tell and no show, and it just tosses you right in. Like, you get almost no buildup from the point that Macy, our main female character, runs into Elliot, the main male protagonist, and then it goes from there. You've got no buildup or angst to that. You haven't gotten any glimpse into their past relationship so far, which very much lessens the impact of this moment because you have you have no connection to them. You have no idea how serious this meeting is. And then not only that, I kid you not, after this random chance meeting, Elliot goes and breaks up with his girlfriend because he knows that Macy is the one for him. Like he knows that she is his soulmate and that running into her is obviously destiny and he needs to be with her. Are you kidding? Not to mention that Macy is engaged. Granted, it's not like a perfect love match and they've only been together for a few months. So right off the bat, you know that this is going to develop into something more between her and Elliot because her engagement with this other guy is not even that substantial. But hold on, let me put my arm down. And so just like in Every Summer After, we are getting glimpses back to the summers that they spent together, but it's so superficial in detail so far. I don't feel like I've gotten enough of their relationship. It's just so very superficial. It's surface level. I'm not getting the emotional connection to these characters. Now, I'm not necessarily surprised by this because because Christina Lauren is always hit or miss for me and their books are never, in my opinion, memorable or substantial. I don't even know why I continue to read them in all honesty. I think that this might be the very last one because I think since this is one of the most highly rated books of theirs and it is probably one of the most highly acclaimed and the most beloved, if I'm not enjoying it to that level already and I'm about a quarter of the way in and I don't know if it's gonna get any better for me, like I don't know if I'm gonna start feeling a connection to these characters. If I don't end up enjoying this one as much as everybody or even as close as everybody else does and I give it like a mediocre rating, I think I'm just done because it's just not going to get any better. So I'm honestly just basically coming on here to rant because I can't believe that there are people so mad over the similarities between these books. But yet in terms of writing, they're like night and day. And there's a lot of distinguishable differences between them. And I just feel like love in other words, it's not giving me the impact that I want so far. Yes, I know I'm only 25% in and it can absolutely change. And I hope it does. I really hope that I come on here and I'm like, y'all, I was wrong. This book is perfection. But come on, one meeting, this guy's willing to dump his girlfriend who apparently they were never meant to be, you know, obviously. And, and Macy's his soulmate and he's got to be with her. Come on, like biggest flippin' eye roll emoji of life. I'm just so irritated by that. I definitely plan on running through this as quick as possible. Like I said, it's not very long. It's only just over four hours of listening time. I've already busted out over an hour of it and I hope to get it done tomorrow because if my enjoyment level stays at this level, it's just not gonna work out for me and I need to get it done. So that's my ranty update. I'll check in when I have more thoughts. Hi friends. So it is Saturday morning and I did officially finish Love and Other Words by Christina Lauren. So I wanted to go ahead and come on here and give you an update. I was pretty ranty in my last update and I will say that my feelings towards the book softened somewhat, but I still stand by the opinion that Every Summer After by Carly Fortune, if you are looking for a book that contains these tropes, you know, childhood friends to lovers and then something tragic happens that tears them apart and they go like a decade without speaking before reuniting. If you're looking for something like that, I truly believe that Every Summer After by Carly Fortune does it better. Now we can make the argument that because I read it first, 
that's why I like it better, but I don't think so. Christina Lauren has always been hit or miss for me. I always find their books more surface level than anything. I never really feel that I get the deepness from their stories, the detail, the complex character dynamics. I don't ever feel like I get that with the Christina Lauren book. But like I said, this did redeem itself somewhat near the end. I would say we were getting to the 60 or 70% mark when I started to feel a lot more invested in the characters. And towards the end, of course, you know, a lot more comes out about the reason why they stopped talking, the twists and things like that. And I will say that the overall twist in Love and Other Words was very dramatic. It was a lot more traumatic as well, I would say. There are essentially two things that happen. One is very similar to what happened in Every Summer After, but then there's something else that happens as a result of that twist that is even worse. That was definitely a doozy. I was not expecting that to happen. But overall, I just feel the execution of Love and Other Words was not nearly as strong as Every Summer After. I feel like Carly Fortune paced that story really well and gave you so much more development and detail of Sam and Percy's relationship. And I definitely felt there was a lot more buildup and lead in to them reconnecting and figuring things out than there was in Love and Other Words. Because like I said, in the very first chapter of this story, Macy is going to get coffee and then she sees Elliot and there has been no buildup to this point. You really don't even know who Macy and Sam are, which lessens the impact of this moment. And then not only that, but there's really no angst involved because Elliot is super happy to see Macy. So happy in fact that he goes right home and breaks up with his girlfriend because he just knows that he and Macy belong together. And obviously them running into each other is a sign from God that they're meant to be together. But like Macy is engaged. It's so super ridiculous. And then all of a sudden she is inviting Elliot to a picnic with her fiance and some of their friends. Like why? I just felt the first 50 or so percent of the story was absolutely ridiculous. And of course, Macy does very little to refuse Elliot. She's trying, but she's not trying. And then also, of course, she's able to really quickly get out of her engagement because the engagement was never right to begin with. She and her fiance weren't meant to be together. They didn't even really have a good romantic relationship and she's just now realizing it. And I'm like, oh, come on. Yeah, all of a sudden your childhood love comes back into your life. You realize everything wrong with your current relationship and now you're gonna easily end it. It was like the most mutually amicable breakup ever. There was just a lot that I found really ridiculous about this story. And like I said, very surface level overall. I definitely don't feel like we got the depth that we got in every summer after. And then near the end, Macy and Elliot are attending Elliot brother's wedding and it gets a little bit more emotional at that point because Macy is seeing his family for the first time in over a decade and everybody is really happy to see her and she just remembers how much she loved them and how much she missed them and then all secrets are revealed towards the end. The last I want to say like 25% of the story maybe 30% of the story was a solid four but the majority of the reading experience was closer to a 2.53 and so because of that I'm going to go ahead and settle on the 3.5 I'm going to kind of split the difference there. It just was not as strong and solid as I thought that it was going to be based on everybody's rave reviews. So in this instance, I don't necessarily think I agree with the online bookish community. This is a highly praised Christina Lauren book. It's got a 4.34 rating on Goodreads. It is probably one of the most highly praised Christina Lauren books out there. It is hugely popular and I don't even think it's their strongest book. It was okay. It wasn't anything mind-blowing. It wasn't anything super memorable to me. That was a really long update, but those were my feelings on Love and Other Words. I know it's probably a really unpopular opinion and I'm sorry, but that's just how I feel and that's what this vlog's about. Hey bookish besties. So I wanted to just pop on here for a really super quick update. So I decided to go ahead and pick up Things We Never Got Over by Lucy Score and I have decided not to continue with this just because it's not it's not really the vibe that I was going for. This one definitely felt like a more chaotic rom-com type just based off of the little that I listened to. I think I got through possibly an hour or more of the audiobook. I can understand why people love it. It's not really what I'm going for. I've probably mentioned this a hundred times already but I like my romances to be harder hitting, a little bit angsty, definitely slow burn and so the vibe of it wasn't what I wanted. So so I'm not considering it a DNF or anything just because this is one of those situations where I picked up the story to give it a try and it wasn't what I was looking for and so it was like a trial and it didn't work out for me. So I didn't really get that far into it. I don't consider this a DNF. I have instead gone ahead and moved on to the fifth and final book that I was planning which is Cake by Jay Bankston and this is a rock star romance. It follows our main character Casey and she is going to be in the bridal party of one of her best friend's weddings and her husband-to-be is actually a very famous rock star but this rock star is not just any rock star because he also has like a traumatic past. He was kidnapped as a young boy and he ended up killing his kidnapper and so he had a lot of fame naturally and a lot of issues you know of course being kidnapped that would traumatize anybody but now he is a world famous rock star and I've only listened to about an hour of it so far but I'm really digging it. So far I really like the banter between the two main characters who are basically paired up as part of the wedding party. So far it's cute. I don't really have much of an opinion but I definitely like it enough to keep going which 
which is important. So anyway, that's a super quick update. I don't think I'm going to continue with things we never got over. I'm jumping right into cake and so far it's going a little bit better for me and it's actually on the longer side. It's about a 12 hour audio, which is six hours of listening time. So it's going to take me a little bit longer to get through, but then I'm going to immediately jump into the other one and hopefully get this done in a timely manner. But that's all I got for the moment. Just wanted to give you a quick update and I'll check in with you a little bit later. Hi friends. I am just about getting ready to go to work. I've been going in a couple of hours late every single day for the past few days because Rob Robert is out of town for work and since he usually gets home about two hours before I do every day and he's able to let out the dogs and stuff, I'm going into work two hours late so that I can kind of compensate for that. And so since I do have some extra time right now, I wanted to go ahead and give you another brief update. So as I mentioned in my last clip, I have gone ahead and started Cake by Jay Bengston and Audible doesn't give me the percentages, but just based off of how much I've listened to and how long it was, I estimate that I'm about 37% of the way through the story. And so far this book is very easy to read, but I have some concerns over the direction that it's headed. So as I mentioned, we are following our two main characters. Casey is in the bridal party. She is on the bride side. And then on the groom side, we have Jake McAllister, who is like this big famous rock star, and he has come to attend his brother's wedding. Casey and Jake are paired up for the bridal party. And so they get to know each other. And Jake finds Casey really, really refreshing because she's not like all the other groupie girls that he encounters on a regular basis. She is incredibly smart. She is a college student in her senior year going for accountancy. So she's definitely a numbers nerd, a math nerd, very, very intelligent. She also has a fantastic sense of humor and she's willing to call him on his BS. She's not afraid to joke around with him. She doesn't treat him with kid gloves. Jake in the public eye is not really known for his personality. He is definitely a more reserved type of rock star. He doesn't go out partying. He doesn't really drink. He doesn't do drugs. He definitely doesn't live up to the stereotypical rock star life. And because of his traumatic past with his kidnapping and everything like that, he definitely has some issues. And so a lot of people kind of seem to think he's very intimidating and standoffish. But as soon as he and Casey start talking, they very much hit it off and Jake really appreciates how like refreshing she is. So, so far this book has taken place over maybe 24 hours. Like they meet after the rehearsal dinner for the wedding and now it is the day of the wedding. The wedding is over and they're at the reception and celebrating and things like that. So like I said, I'm not even halfway through. There's obvious spark and chemistry between them. The banter in this story is really great. I love the way that they are conversing with each other. You can tell that Jake doesn't normally have this and he definitely keeps women at arm's length. Like he doesn't want any woman to go close. He doesn't want to have to emotionally connect with any of them. So in that way, he is kind of stereotypical like he only wants casual sex and things like that but he knows that Casey is worth more and deserves more and he doesn't like want to lead her on or anything like that so he is being a gentleman about it and I'm really enjoying their dynamic and their chemistry my concern is with books like this first of all I like a little bit more aloofness at the beginning like it was almost an instant chemistry and attraction between the two although they're kind of like trying to play it cool and deny it and things like that but both of them are kind of ogling each other like he's hot she's hot things like that and I, I like a little bit more aloofness there a little bit more slow burn. Definitely. I'm, I'm much more of a slow burn type of person and not necessarily just in terms of when they get together in the relationship, but when they start noticing each other that way and start pining for each other and angsting for each other and things like that. So it is definitely moving really, really quick for me, especially because it is only so far taking place over like a 24 hour period. But what also really gets to me is that because we're not even halfway through, I anticipate something happening that causes conflict between them and something that they're going to have to overcome in the next 50% because that is like the standard form formula for these types of things. And if it's done well, I don't necessarily mind it, but I don't want conflict for conflict's sake. If it's going to be a conflict, I need it to be real. I need it to be genuine. I need it to be serious and realistic and not forced. So I'm a little bit trepidatious. I'm a little bit worried about how it's going. So far, it's a good time. I'm enjoying my reading experience. I'm not mad about it, but I am a little bit concerned over the direction that it's taking. And I'm not yet fully invested in their relationship. Like I haven't gotten the buildup or the angst that I need yet for that. So it's not my favorite, but it's definitely not awful is basically where I'm leaning at right now. But that's the update for now. I have about four hours of listening time of the audiobook left. So four hours of actual listening time because I listen on two times speed. So I still have eight hours of the story left. This is definitely a very long book, which on the outset would make me happy because I would assume that I'm getting the slow burn, but not quite, right? So I'm not even halfway through, but yet it's kind of speeding up and I still have over half of the book left. So we're going to see. I'm definitely not going to finish it today. I will probably finish it tomorrow. And then once once I do, I will give you an update. Hi friends, I am headed to the gym, but I did finish Cake by Jay Bingston today and I wanted to go 
ahead and give you an update. So I think I'm going to go ahead and settle on a three star for this one. Unfortunately, it had the potential to be so much stronger than it was and it just didn't work out for me. So if I had to summarize this in just like one brief sentence about like what the purpose of it was or the message or whatnot, I would say that this was wish fulfillment. I mean, I'm sure that we've all had that fantasy about being noticed by our favorite sexy rock star and being swept away in a whirlwind passionate romance with them. And that's basically what this was. Jay Bangston basically took that fantasy and put it on the page. But unfortunately, she decided to make it way longer than necessary. And because she made it way longer than necessary, she tried to put too much in it, making it way too chaotic. So first of all, this could have been a lot more slow burn than it was. In fact, it wasn't even all that slow burn at all. Our two main characters meet at a wedding. They have their meet cute. And then it's basically instant flirtation and kissing. It doesn't go beyond that. But there is an instant attraction. They start the flirting and things. And like within 24 hours, Jake, the rock star, decides Casey is not like other girls and he wants to try to pursue her in some way. And so he goes off on a world tour. He's in Europe and he's chatting with Casey for a couple of weeks. And he's like, hey, you know what, Casey, why don't you drop everything and fly out to London and you can be here while I'm doing my three concerts in London. And she's like, yeah, sure. Why not? And so she flies out there. They have a great time. And then that ultimately leads to, you know what? Just stay. Don't go back home. Stay with me and complete my worldwide tour with me for the summer. And so she basically drops everything. Luckily, she's not in school during the summer, but she quits her job. And Jake actually gives her enough money to pay for the expenses that she would accrue while not working. And she's basically with Jake this whole time over the summer tour. But of course, it's not all sunshine and roses because, you know, Jake has a traumatic past. He was kidnapped and sexually assaulted as a child. And some of that stuff he still hasn't dealt with. And he actually has a physical injury from this time. And that physical injury is getting worse and worse and worse. And so he is in pain and he is being grouchy and he's being rude to Casey and he is pushing her away. And so you're kind of dealing with that drama because it gets him hospitalized. And then eventually they're back in the States and they're meeting each other's parents. And then the leg thing gets worse and he has to go into surgery and he might not make it and it's life or death. And it's like, holy chaos, Batman. Too much, too, too much, too chaotic, lack of transitions, too up and down. I don't know. This one was just a little bit all over the place for me. Like I said, I thought it had the potential to be a lot stronger than it was. I think I would have enjoyed it better if it was a lot more slow burn. Like say Jake and Casey met at this wedding and there was a connection there, but like Casey is not all that impressed with Jake and he has to work a lot harder to get her attention. And then over the course of that wedding weekend, you know, they talk and they get to know each other, but nothing more. And then he goes away on his world tour and he continues to think about her. And so he ends up giving her a call and they start chatting and developing further. And then when he's back in the States, things pick up and go from there. I just really felt like it was too rushed. I didn't feel like I got enough time to actually connect with them individually or connect with their relationship. I also wasn't really connecting with them because they were so young, like they were in their early twenties and it was just not relatable. None of it was relatable. So unfortunately this one just really didn't work for me. I do think that a rock star romance has the potential to be great. And when I went into Kate, I actually thought that it was going to be harder hitting than it was, but what I felt like it was doing, yes, there were some harder hitting helmets and the fact that Jake had some childhood trauma that he was working through, but it felt more soap opera than legitimate to me in this story. It didn't feel as serious as it was supposed to be. So there were just a lot of marks that were missed for me in this story, unfortunately. And I ended up like speeding it up more than two times speed. I got to like 2.35 speed because I just wanted it over. It was way entirely way too long. It could have been shortened and it could have just been more smooth overall going from one thing to another. And I don't know, there's a lot that I would fix about this story. So I'm giving it a three because it wasn't awful. And overall, I think that my reading experience was mostly enjoyable, but it's not really something that I'm going to remember. It's not something I was emotionally connected to. I'm definitely not continuing in the series. And so we're just going to move on. And that leads me to the very final book that I'm likely going to start. And that's Only When It's Us by Chloe Leese. This is the first book in her Bergman Brothers. Oh, I can't remember the name of the series off the top of my head, but I've heard a lot of great things about this story and I'm excited to continue. And hopefully it is not a dud for me. Hopefully I can end this vlog on a strong note. So once I've actually started it and have some thoughts and feelings, I will let you know. Hey y'all. So I just wanted to come on here and give you the final update and kind of wrap up this vlog because I did read the last book that I plan to read for this vlog, which is Only When It's Us by Chloe Leese. I failed miserably at coming on here when I actually started the book and giving you updates as I was reading it, but that's for a couple of reasons. First of all, I found myself very distracted for like, gosh, I would say easily the first 50% of this book. And I think it was a combination of life stuff distracting me, but also being distracted because of the fact that this wasn't exactly what I was looking for either. Kind of along the same lines of The Things We Never Got Over by Lucy Score. This definitely had a more lighthearted feel overall. And so I didn't have the urge to pay attention to it. And then it just got to the point where I was kind of wanting to get it over with. So I really apologize for the lack of updates with regard to this book. We're going to talk about it really quick and just kind of wrap up this vlog. So again, the book that I read was Only When It's Us by Chloe Leese. And this is definitely advertised as a hate to love or enemies to lovers kind of relationship or frenemies to lovers is probably more accurate. And there was something very weird to me about the execution of the story that really conflicted my feelings about it. And so I think that's where I kind of stand 
event at the end of my reading experience. So this follows our main character, Willa, and she is going to, I think it's UCLA in California, and she is one of their star soccer players. Like she is planned to go pro and everything like that. She's a very well-respected athlete at this university. Even though school is important to her, athletics definitely come first. And because of her status as an athlete, instructors have certain expectations that they are supposed to meet for her. Like if she has to miss class or late to class or something, they're supposed to like supply her the notes and not give her a whole heck of a lot of crap because of it. But she is currently in a business mathematics course where the instructor doesn't care that she is an athlete. And he kind of thinks that she hasn't given the proper attention to this class and he's not going to really make it easy for her. And so instead of giving her lecture notes for classes that she's missed, he tells Willa to get the notes from Ryder, who is this very kind of strong, silent, surly type, lumberjack looking guy who sits in class, who Willa has never had any interactions with. And she tries to get the notes from Ryder, but he completely ignores her. He doesn't acknowledge her at all. And then he kind of gets up and leaves. And she is furious. She is just ready to take Ryder down. She is a very hot tempered person. She is very quick to anger and very impulsive with that rage. Like she doesn't stop to think about it or think it through or calm down. She just goes based off of that instinct. And that is a theme throughout this entirety of the story, which of course is absolutely obnoxious. And so Ryder is instantly on her shit list. And then it's further exacerbated when the same instructor says, okay, now we're going to do this big project and it's going to be a project with teams. And he intentionally sets Willa up with Ryder. And so Willa kind of knows that she's going to have to play nice with Ryder if they're going to get through this project. And so they start working together and Willa ends up finding out that Ryder is actually very hard of hearing, almost practically deaf because of a bout of serious bacterial meningitis that caused him to lose hearing in his ears. And because of that, he actually doesn't speak. And he doesn't typically wear hearing aids a lot because it actually kind of makes things more complicated with his hearing. Like it could actually affect him with feedback and things like that. So he didn't hear Willa ask for those notes. And so they kind of start developing this tentative friendship. But then one day Willa notices that Ryder is actually wearing a hearing aid that he usually doesn't wear. And he's been able to hear what she's saying. And so again, she's like, okay, I'm going to get you back for this. And here's where it kind of loses me a little bit, right? So she decides to get back at Ryder by the next day coming to class in this very revealing top, like displaying her assets. So she's trying to get back at Ryder by like sexually frustrating him, I guess. But that doesn't compute with me because they started off on very shaky, rocky ground. They haven't even developed a friendship yet. And while you can kind of tell that both are kind of attracted to each other, there really has been nothing further in that regard. And so Willa's first instinct is to make Ryder sexually frustrated with her. Like, I don't, I don't get that trajectory. And then it becomes like this back and forth game between the two to see who can turn the other on the most. And I just didn't understand that dynamic. Like, how do you go from enemies, frenemies situation to tentative friendship situation to, oh, I'm going to see how much I can turn you on. And then of course there are bouts of kissing and heavy petting and things like that. And then pulling apart and like, what, what are you guys? Are you friends? Are you enemies? Are you frenemies? Which I don't even think that's the case because I think if you are frenemies, you are actually frenemies with somebody. You are more enemies than you are friends. Like there is no wanting to turn each other on. There is nothing going on like that. So the dynamic between these characters was extremely weird and unrelatable to me. And I didn't understand the direction that this author took. And instead of being a straight hate to love or enemies to love relationship, she put all of these gray areas in between, which really conflicted my feelings and made it very hard for me to connect to these characters and their relationship. I didn't get the dynamics of their relationship. It really confused me. It was a very unusual direction. I did like some of the harder hitting elements that were put into the story. Like Willa is dealing with the fact that her mom has terminal cancer and is likely not going to survive. And so that was a very difficult dynamic of the story. I found myself getting a little bit choked up at that because I can only imagine. But I also feel like there was a very missed opportunity with that in terms of the way that Ryder could have helped Willa with her healing. So like after Willa loses her mom, there's like a period of weeks, maybe even months of grieving when Willa and Ryder don't even talk. And it's like glossed completely over in the story. Now I understand why if it's meant to be as like a character building thing for Willa, like I can kind of see that. Like you're supposed to connect and love Willa more because of the hardships that she's going through. I can kind of see that. But overall, this was just a little bit chaotic for me and it didn't work like I wanted it to work. And then of course, near the end, they're admitting their love for each other, but not only their love, their everlasting undying, I want to be with you forever and have babies with you love. And I didn't get that. Okay, sure. You finally admitting that you guys have serious feelings for each other and you want to be together and you love each other. But this is now a forever love after all of the back and forth that you guys have been through, never really cementing your relationship. You're finally admitting to each other that you have serious feelings and you're wanting to continue in this relationship. But now you're also saying that you want to be together forever and have babies. And it's, you know, it's one and done. You guys are never going to love another person in your entire life. That also kind of sat with me the wrong way because it wasn't realistic. It, it wasn't realistic because they haven't even had a chance to get to and through the honeymoon phase. So I really feel like there was a lot of missed opportunities within this story to make it stronger, to make it easier to connect to the relationship. I didn't like the back and forth teasing games that they had on because it really grayed the dynamic. And it was further allowed to remain gray because Willa absolutely refuses and is incapable 
capable of having hard conversations. Like anytime a hard conversation comes up, she books it, she splits. And that was just another character flaw of hers on top of her very hot headed temper and stuff like that. She wasn't willing to have the hard conversations. So you have a lot of things in here just didn't work right for me, didn't sit right for me and wasn't what I wanted. So unfortunately I gave this one a three stars. So I definitely had a lot of issues with it. And I definitely had a lot of technical issues with cake too, but I feel like my overall reading experience with cake was a lot more solid and enjoyable throughout. So unfortunately, didn't love that one. All right, y'all. So that is it for this vlog. So just as a recap, I read five books for this vlog. First two, Part of Your World and Every Summer After were amazing. Five stars. Absolutely phenomenal. I 100% agree with the online bookish community. The third one, Love in Other Words, wasn't as strong for me. I gave it a 3.5 stars. I can understand why people love it, but I think if I had read it first before reading Every Summer After, I might have had a more positive thoughts and feelings on it, but I just felt like it was wholly inferior to Every Summer After, and it was so noticeable that I just couldn't really rate it on its own merits. So that was a 3.5. And then with regard to Cake and Only When It's Us, there were just so many technical issues with both of those stories. They could have been so much better, so much stronger, so much more along the lines of what I am looking for in a romance. And that really is what this all comes down to, right? What am I looking for in a romance? And I obviously have very specific requirements. I want a lot of slow burn. I want a lot of tension. I want a lot of buildup to the time that they get together and the time they start getting to know each other. And I want there to be a legitimate conflict in there that they have to work through and not just conflict for conflict's sake. And I don't want a lot of this other random stuff thrown in that gets in the way and that really just detracts from their relationship and everything else. So unfortunately Cake and Only When It's Us didn't work out like I wanted it to and I think I gave both of those three stars. So those are definitely not two that I can really agree with the online bookish community about and I won't be continuing in those series. All right y'all please comment down below and let me know if you have read any of these books and what your thoughts are. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Do you think I'm completely wrong and out of my mind? I would love to know. And as always if you like this video or if you just like me please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. I post two videos a week sometimes three if I have my shit together and I have a video to film and I would sure love to see you in one of those next videos. Bye guys.